Hi, Tamara here. Welcome to my channel. This video will be posted Sunday, March 29th, and effective yesterday, Friday, March 27th. Minnesota is officially under the um, governor's order for shelter in place. And Minnesota joins many other states now who have an official shelter in place order. And um, we don't know when this is gonna end. It is a time of anxiety and concern. And how I deal with it is you know, take care of my health, practice gratitude, and play with makeup. <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but YouTube has brought me a lot of comfort. I enjoy watching other people. I enjoy creating. And um, the act of putting on makeup, I find extremely soothing, relaxing, creative, and just it helps me maintain my routine. So with that being said, what I thought I would do is a drugstore get ready with me. Uh, I think of myself as a drugstore girl. And as I was preparing for this video, I realized, yeah, I have more than I thought of the high end and even a couple of luxury products that I needed to replace. Most of the makeup that I'm going to be working with today did come from my stash, but I did have to purchase just a couple of uh, items to replace the higher end items that I normally wear. With that being said, let's jump right into uh, my Get Ready With Me using 100% drugstore products, most under $10. If this sounds interesting to you, just keep watching. All right, let's get to this drugstore Get Ready With Me. I have already put in my Lumify eye drops. I use these every single day. These make my eyes so bright, so white, and I think it also reduces the inflammation along the the waterline. Anyway, I love it. I use it every day. Technically, drugstore, right? The other thing, so I have all my skincare on. I have my Elta MD sunscreen. I also have been using, now this is part of my skincare. It's not drugstore but it's part of my skincare. The Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Cream. I've been prehydrating my under eyes in an effort to uh, reduce the, you know, how my under eyes can be dry and crepey, and I think it has been helping. So again, the uh, sunscreen has set down, the Kiehl's Avocado Eye Cream has set down. When the Kiehl's goes on at first, it's very, very emollient, almost shiny. So I apply that 10 or 15 minutes before the rest of my makeup to make sure it has a chance to set in. Which brings me to really the most challenging part of the drugstore get ready with me. Usually, at my very first thing is to go in with my Urban Decay Naked uh, Corrector in the color Peach. That's my ride or die under eye corrector. I did pick up this Pixie Corrector. It is very peachy, but the Urban Decay is almost a liquid, very lightweight, and this is a much more heavy cream. I am using this Real Techniques um, base shadow brush. It is much fluffier, and by using that, I think I can get a lighter application. So I'm just going in with my brush, and you will see me looking over at my mirror here. And I'm trying to apply the smallest amount because this is a much drier formula. This is a much drier formula than, than I usually prefer. Let's see how it goes. Again, just the tiniest amount, just to get some correction going. Canceling out the idea is to cancel out the purple. I think that did a pretty good job, actually. Yeah, 
not bad. I tried this without the keels and it was really dry and cakey. I think the keels does help it blend in quite a bit more. So my next step is foundation. My favorite drugstore foundation has been the Physician Formula The Healthy Foundation. Unfortunately, they have or are discontinuing it. So I'm not going to use that today. One of the reasons I liked this is that the finish was very skin-like. It wasn't dewy, it wasn't overly radiant, it wasn't matte, it just looked like skin. But alternatives. Um, another foundation I have long had in my collection when I, and I will be using today is the L'Oreal Pro Glow. This is a really nice foundation. It's sort of a classic. I think it's been around for a while. A lot of people love it. In fact, Lisa J did a video a couple of months ago. She was looking for a dupe for the La Mer foundation and she actually um, did a side-by-side -side, La Mer on one side L'Oreal Pro Glow on the other and she thought they were this was a dupe for that which is amazing because the La Mer is I think over a hundred dollars which is crazy to me and this is around ten dollars so I will be using this today this is a light to medium they say medium but I apply it more lightly so light to medium coverage radiant I wouldn't call it dewy finish I recently saw Tammy's Ageless Beauty. She did a video and she loved this Revlon Candid Glow Foundation. I usually love Tammy's recommendation, so I went out and purchased this and I did love it. It is, it has a beautiful glow. Unfortunately, I bought a color that was way too light. Since the L'Oreal is a little dark, this is my summer color and this is too light, I thought I would mix the two today for the purpose of our drugstore foundation but either one of them they are both excellent it's not like you need to go buy both of them to mix them together I would use either one alone if I had the correct color the L'Oreal is pretty runny and the uh, Revlon Pro Glow is more of a thicker consistency so I just am mixing this in my hand I am taking my real techniques buffing brush and I'm just gonna mix that in there like so. I apply foundation with this buffing brush to get an even layer on my face. I don't blend with the buffing brush. I blend with a sponge but I always use the buffing brush to apply an even layer which I will do right now. I just have a I, I don't do well with the dot, dot, dot because I don't know, I just feel like it's harder to blend it evenly. And I like to get an even layer before I start blending. Although I do use the brush to pull it down my neck and into my ears. And I go right over my eyes. So that is an even layer applied. Then I take my L'Oreal um, Beauty Sponge, take whatever is left on my hand, which isn't much, and I just use this to press it in, blend it, and make it one with the skin. This is damp, of course. I take the end of the sponge and just make sure I don't have a buildup in my eyebrows and make sure it's not, there we go, I have a hair somewhere, I can't see it. If you have a hair, use a spoolie because that will take the hair off. So that's the foundation. I think you can see. I hope you can see it has a nice radiant finish it's light coverage and yeah I like it it's very nice okay so that's the foundation now I, I did correct my under eyes now I'm gonna go in with concealer I did discover a really nice concealer I was very surprised this is the elf 
hydrating camo concealer. I did buy the color peach, hoping it would be more correcting, but it really is more of a skin tone. It's not really peach like a corrector is. It has a thicker consistency. It's not watery like um, some of the concealers that I've used in the past, and I do prefer a thinner consistency, but this is very hydrating, and I, I really like it. It's a huge doe foot. If I went in like that, I would get way too much. Again, for me, the secret to correcting and concealing is to just use the tiniest bit. So I am going to go in with my the same uh, brush that I used for the corrector, and I am just going to pick up a little bit of this on the brush, tap it off, and I'm going to use the concealer on my eyelids and then just a little bit um, to go over the corrector. I do not use a eyeshadow primer. I just I like using concealer because I have a lot of discoloration on my eyelids that I need to correct. And I find the concealer works just as well. I've really never found a eye, eyelid primer that I felt I needed to have. I think concealer is just fine. Now for the tricky part. I really want to make sure I don't go in too heavy down here on the under eye. So, making sure there's hardly anything on the brush. And just patting in with my finger. Same thing on this side. The tiniest, I mean tiny amount. So easy to overdo concealer, at least for me. It's a little, it's a little lighter than, I usually, I don't like to have super light under my eyes. I think that's a little bit light for the color of the foundation. So I'm going to let that set down and probably I will go over it with my Garnier um, Anti-Dark Circle Roller Ball. This is a, it's not a corrector, it's not a concealer, it's a combination, very lightweight, very sheer corrector concealer, brightener I would call it, and I think this will bring that color to match the rest of my face. So I will do that in a little bit. Now this foundation is a little bit tacky and normally I would go in with my hourglass powder but I cannot because this is drugstore. I did purchase the e.l.f. Halo Glow uh, Loose Setting Powder. It's only $6. It's, it's, it's okay. I mean I, I'm not a big powder person anyway I'm just going to go in with the tiniest, tiniest little amount. A little tiny bit in the cap, right? Taking it on this Eco Tools blush brush. And I'm going to tap it off super good. And I'm just going to press a little bit T zone, not under my eyes just to take some of the tackiness down so that my powder products don't stick, so that they blend nicely. I might put a little bit on my eyelids as well. Let's do that. Make sure that concealer gets set down. Can't even see what I'm doing here. So I'm tapping out the creases in my eyelids and just putting a little bit of setting powder there. Just a little bit. But you will notice I did not set my under eyes. I, I don't dare. I just don't dare. Too creepy. Okay, so powder's on. Not a bad powder for six dollars, but you know it doesn't come, it doesn't touch the hourglass. I, I don't know if there is a drugstore product that could. I do want to show you a super awesome 
cream blush. This is by Wet n Wild. This is their Mega Goal Stick Cream Blush. And this is in the color Floral Majority. And I will take um, my Real Techniques. I'm going to use a Real Techniques setting brush. And just go in. I don't go in directly from the stick. That makes it a little bit hard to blend. I'll just put a little bit on this brush. And I'm just going to apply it high up on the cheekbone. Can you see that? It is really pretty. It's really creamy. It blends in very easily. I like it. You know, cream blushes are very popular right now for good reason. They're excellent on drier, more mature skin. I always apply blush high up on my cheekbones. I try not to apply blush below the level of my nostril. And the old smile and do the apple to your cheeks doesn't work for me anymore. Because when I smile and there's the apple, and when I stop smiling, the apple falls. And if I concentrate a whole bunch of blush on the apple, when the apple falls, it just drags my face down. So I do keep blush pretty high up on my cheeks. I wanted to show you this. I like it very much. There are several colors, but this is a beautiful sort of rosy pink color. Okay. Um, I forgot bronzer. Bronzer. My only drugstore bronzer, which I absolutely love. Um, Physician Formula Butter Bronzer. I like the smell. It smells like coconut. And I love it. It's the only bronzer I need. It's a little bit glowy. It never looks orange. I am going in. I'm just going to do, I don't sculpt. I don't contour. But I do want to warm my face up. And I'm going to use this Real Techniques powder brush. Because this will give me a very nice diffused look. Um, normally I put my bronzer on before my blush. But, you know, forgot. So, I'll just go in. I always tap a little bit off somewhere on my body and I am just going in sort of very lightly just to warm my face up. I don't even know if that's translating on camera at all. I always take it down the neck. Actually this is sort of acting as a setting powder as well for that cream blush. I love the Physician Formula Butter Bronzer, and I am going to go in with just a little, a little bit of powder blush because I love this blush too, and I wanted to show it to you, although, ah, uh, how come I can't open it? There we go. This is the Milani Baked Blush in the color Berry Amore. I love this formula. I have two of these blushes. I have Luminosa, which is a warm uh, peachy pink, great for summer. And then this is a cooler, rosier, mauvier tone. I love this blush. I'm going to go in with my uh, Real Techniques blush brush. And let's just go high up on the cheekbone again. And one of the things I love about this is it is glowy. And so it's sort of like you don't need a highlighter, which I don't really wear highlighters anyway. But I do like to get a little bit of a glow. Okay, I just adjusted my ring light up a little bit because it's I'm losing my daylight and couldn't tell how the light was. Anyway, foundation, blush, powder, corrector, done. It would have been three minutes if I wasn't talking through this. Okay, let's go to eyeshadow. Drugstore. This is wet and wild. This is actually broke, broken. This is the second time I have... This is the first time I've repurchased it. I used up an entire quad. This is Walking on Eggshells. I love this. This is such a great, easy, everyday, go-to, neutral eye. And I'm just going to use one, uh, one or two eyeshadow brushes. Like I said, 
I am using all drugstore brushes too. Normally for my eyeshadow, I use my two IT Cosmetics eyeshadow brushes, but I really think the real techniques are very, very good, almost as good. I, I do think these the IT is a little fluffier and softer. These work just fine. And I have tried some drugstore brushes that I do not like. I don't like Morphe, it's way too scratchy. Um, I had a whole set of Beauty Junkies brushes. I've gotten rid of those. I pretty much love all of the Real Technique brushes. Other than one Eco Tools brush, all of the brushes I'm using today are Real Techniques and I love every single one of them. So I'm gonna start my eyeshadow with this nice shell pink uh, satin color. I wouldn't, it's not foiled, I wouldn't even know if I would call it necessarily a shimmer, somewhere between a satin and a shimmer. And I'm gonna put that on my eyelid. Let's see. Just the sort of inner part of the eyelid to the center. And I'm just patting it on, just patting it on. I like to have a little lightness and shimmer and soft pink to my eyelids. Okay, so that is the soft pink in the Wet n Wild uh, Walking on Eggshells. Then I'm just going to clean this same brush off and I'm going to go in and do a transition shade. This. Uh, Taupey Tan Light Color is a really nice transition shade. Tap my brush off. And the tra I'm sort of sculpting my hooded eyes using this darker color to sort of contour and push back that hood, right? Dark helps recede. The dark recedes the hood and the light pink on the lid helps bring the lid forward. And then blend, 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 blend. That's the key. I do some of the application in a magnifying mirror and then I use the non-magnifying part of the mirror to make sure I can see myself at a little bit of a distance with my eyes just held somewhat normally so that I can ensure that that sculpting color is above the crease and doing its job of sculpting. Okay, that's the transition color. I am gonna use another brush. Then this darker brown, although it's not a super dark brown, and it is a satin, I'm gonna take a little bit of this and I'm going to put it in the outer corner of my eyelid just to deepen that up a little bit. Always tap so you don't get the fallout on your face. It's better to go in with a little bit and add than to overdo it and try to take it away. Then I'll take a little tiny bit of that darker satin color and put it right in the uh, crease line, not above like the um, transition shade, but literally in. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just darken up that outer corner and take it a little bit into the crease itself. Then I'm going to take my same blending brush that I used for the transition color and I will just use that to blend. Blend the darker color into the lighter color and just make sure everything is blended seamlessly. No harsh lines. Very pretty. What do you think? That's a natural everyday look. Now, the one thing this does not have is a um, matte highlight color. This is a little shimmery which normally I would not use on my brow bone, but I am gonna go in with a little bit today, tap it off really, really good, and just go in with the tiniest amount really close to my brow, brow eyebrow there. Just a little tiny bit. That is the eyeshadow look. I am gonna do a little inner corner highlight with my Essence 
Pure Nude Highlighter in the color Be My Highlight. I love this. This is like $3. It's a wonderful highlighter, and it's also great for inner corner. I'll take a little bit of that, and I'm just going to work that into that inner corner there so that where we get dark, and this helps brighten up the eye as well. And while we're at it, I'm going to do a little highlighting on my face. This is very, very subtle. It is just more of a glow without shimmer. It's very, very finely milled. It does not accentuate any of my lines or wrinkles. I like it a lot. I'm going to go in with this uh, Eco Tools Fluffy Blush Brush. And I'm just going to pat it on to the high points in my cheeks and a little bit on the apple. I think when you have a little bit of glow on the apple of your cheek, it tends to lift in a very pretty way. Okay, we're getting close here. I'm gonna go in with my Physician Formula Eye Pencils. I use the dark brown on my upper tight line, and then I use the lighter brown on my lower lash line and here's what they look like dark brown light brown okay so i'm going to go ahead and tight line my upper uh upper lash line and what tight lining does the purpose of tight lining for me is to make my eyelashes look thicker and also just to accentuate the eyes without putting eyeliner, without eyeliner on top of the eyelashes. You know, when you get older and your lids start hooding, you don't have a lot of lid space to begin with. And if I had a thick line of eyeliner on my upper eye, uh, on my upper lash line, it would actually, I would lose my eyelid even more and it would make my eyes look, I think, even more hooded. So again, I love to tight line just to accentuate the eyes. And tight lining is applying eyeliner underneath the eyelashes. What I do is I close my eyelid halfway, sort of on the eyeliner itself, and just rub the eyeliner back and forth. It does take to practice, but it is very effective in accentuating the lash line. I will take a little tiny bit above the lash line in this outer corner, and on the upper and on the lower, just a little bit. And then I will take the lighter brown, and I'll use the lighter brown to blend that darker brown in to soften it and drag some of that darker brown along the lower lash line. So I think you can see the difference there. I don't like to have a dark line under on my lower lashes because I think that drags the eye down, but I do like to have a soft line of definition on the lower lashes. It, it sort of balances the upper and the lower and connects it everything and makes it a little bit more cohesive looking. So let me do this side. Eyeliner done, eyeshadow done. Gonna go in with brows, mascara, lipstick, and we'll be good for eyebrows. I really like this cover girl easy breezy brow. It has pretty much replaced my gimme brow for a fraction, a fraction of the cost. I think this is six dollars and if I'm not mistaken gimme brow is in the twenty some dollar price range. So this is a thickening and darkening brow mascara. You know it helps fluff them up And many days, that is all I need. Where's my spoolie? There it is. 
Many days, that's all I need to use. Got a little heavy handed there. You can see the difference in the brows. Let me finish this one. I know this video is going on a little bit longer than I had intended. It just takes a while when you're talking. And I do not know how people do the chatty get ready, get ready with me. I just, I need to concentrate when I'm doing makeup, which is one of the reasons that it's so relaxing is because I just get lost in it. I don't know, I'm struggling with eyebrows today. The tails of my eyebrows are disappearing. And very often, this is all I need, but I feel like, I do feel like I need just a little bit more. I'm going to just use a little bit of my Rimmel Brow This Way brow powder in the color blonde to just make sure the tails of my eyebrows aren't completely disappearing. Eyebrows are hard. They're important, but they're hard. Mascara, my dream team, L'Oreal Lash Primer, uh, which makes my lashes thicker and longer. I do use Revitalash, and Revitalash has been a game changer. I've been using Revitalash for about a year, and it has definitely given me much longer, thicker lashes. I love it, but even so, I really like the lash primer. L'Oreal Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara. I've been using this for years, 10 for sure, maybe even 15. Going in first with the lash primer. Um, the trick with the lash primer is to let it set for 10 or 15 seconds and then go in with the mascara. If you apply the mascara immediately on top of very wet lash primer, the mascara will sort of wipe away the lash primer. If you wait too long and let the lash primer totally dry, the mascara seems to have a harder time sticking to it. So doing one, doing the primer one eye then the other then mascara one eye then the other seems to be sort of the sweet spot for me to get some length and volume with my lashes now in the interest of time and not to bore you and also because this is really just a natural daytime look I am not going to go overboard with mascara. I'm just going to do one coat. But the lash primer really helps, in my opinion, to give the mascara a little extra help. Okay, so that's one coat of mascara. Pretty impressive. Okay, where are we at? Face is done, blush, bronzer, highlighter, eyeshadow, eyeliner. I think all we have left is lipstick. Uh, my go-to lip liner is the NYX Matte Lip Liner in the color Whipped Caviar. This is a lovely, pinky, nudie, neutral. Goes with, I use this with literally all of my lip colors. You could use it even on its own and just put a little balm or gloss on it. It's just a really nice color. Okay. The reason I use lip liner is to help prevent the lipstick from feathering into the lines. I do not like a lined look, so I always sort of fill in a little bit with this. But the, today, the lipstick that I'm going to be using is All May Lip Vibes, and this is in the color Be Strong, which I thought was really fitting for the start of our shelter in place. It's a very bright, 
cheerful, springy color. I love it. I'll show you it compared to my usual Lisa Eldridge Muse, so you can see. The Elme is much brighter than the Muse. They're both beautiful colors compared to my um, varnished rosewood. Okay. All May, Be Strong, Lisa Eldridge, Muse, L'Oreal Varnished Rosewood. So let's go in with the lipstick. So you can see that's pretty bright. It's really pretty. It is not matte, but it's not glossy either. And I do prefer a little bit of a glossier, softer look. So I'm gonna go over it with my L'Oreal Varnished Rosewood. That'll give it a little bit of a gloss. And it will also just take down the brightness of the color a little tiny bit. This L'Oreal Varnished Rosewood, I think I use, I don't think, I know I use this every day. I use it alone, I use it with lip liner, I top other colors of lipsticks with it. I love it, it lives in my purse. I love it. Oh, one more thing, I have to use my Garnier Anti-Dark Circle Roller Ball. Can't remember if I already did that or not. Okay, drugstore, 100% drugstore, full face and makeup done. Um, that was really fun. I, 85, I would say, I don't know, 85% of these products I already owned and loved. Like I said, I did have to purchase the Pixie uh, corrector. I still prefer the Urban Decay, but I was able to make this work. I think the key with this, because it is dry, is to really moisturize your under eyes with some sort of emollient eye cream. Um, the other new product that I did buy today was this Candid, Revlon Candid. I really like this. If I could get the correct color, I would absolutely use this on its own, but it blended in and worked really nicely. Uh, a custom little mix with my L'Oreal Pro Glow, which is also excellent. And I think the only other product I purchased for today was this, no, uh, there was one, two more. Two more products I purchased. The e.l.f. Pro Glow Powder, which will never replace my hourglass, but it's pretty good. And then that camo concealer, here it is. This was a great find too. I really like this e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Anyway, we did it. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Hang in there, you know, it's uh, not an easy time. Take care of yourself, be grateful, um, practice your social um, distancing, and get out there and take a walk if you can. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, I would love it if you would subscribe and join my YouTube community. We're having a lot of fun here. Anyway, thank you. Hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day and take care excellent care of yourself. Thanks. I wanted you to meet my puppy Bosley. He's not a puppy. He's 10 years old. Say hi Bosley. He's a little camera shy. He is a mini golden doodle and he is keeping me company during shelter in place. We're taking lots of walks together. <laughs> oh my god. There you go. He's my velcro dog. He's my buddy. So if you see him or hear him during any of my videos, this is Bosley. He's a good boy. Okay, enough of that. It uh, it's it'll not be uh, you know shine to the stars. Okay, thanks. Bye. Not bye. Look at the camera, not at the monitor. Oh, I'm shaking the table. I'm so sorry. I think you can see the difference there. Made a little mistake there. Do I have a Q-tip anywhere? Ah.
How could I be here without a Q-tip? Hmm. Where did that brush go? Gosh, I'm so disorganized. But it, it doesn't help when you can't see anything. No Bosley. And you can see, am I still filming? Yes, I'm running out of battery. I have to finish up here. <laughs>